All right. So hello, uh, welcome to the uh, Maison Francaise of New York University. My name is Philip John Usher. Uh, this is the third episode in our new series about Michel de Montaigne and the essay. And my guest today is Tom Connolly. Uh, thank you so much for being with us, Tom. So um, Abbott Lawrence Lower Professor of Visual and Environmental Studies and of Romance Languages and Literatures at Harvard University, Tom Connolly is a specialist of 16th century French literature and cartography, including the writings of Michel de Montaigne. He has also written eloquently about cinema, most recently a book on Raoul Walsh. These various passions and pursuits are not as unrelated as one might first think. Throughout Tom Connolly's work, reading is always also seeing and mapping, and seeing and mapping are also always reading, such that Montaigne and his contemporaries become at each turn proto-cinematic, while the films of the 20th and 21st century become readable like early modern texts and maps. Tom Connolly has published extensively on Montaigne's essays, much more than I could summarize here. One place to start might be Tom's 1994 contribution to the MLA's approaches to teaching Montaigne's essays focused on the essays and the visual arts, and which truly gives a sense of what it's like to be in a classroom with Tom. Tracing out how the essay relate to Renaissance portraiture, the arts of perspective, mannerist paintings, uh, and specific iconic representations and the themes dotted throughout the chapters, Tom describes a classroom in which students read and indeed view the essay alongside the blurred and tonal lines of Rembrandt's self-portraits in which figure and ground are confused. Just as in the essay, even the alert reader cannot always distinguish between chronicle, quotation, observation, or self-depiction. In pages that return frequently to this reader's mind, Tom invites the student to reread Montaigne's description of his tower, chapel, bedroom, library, with an eye directed at the up and down movement that translates, quote, an optical effect of torsion, a curvilinear view of Montaigne's world that recalls François Premier's turning stairway at the Chateau de Blois. When Montaigne says, je vis, he is thus living and turning, and Tom invites us to do just the same. Another place to start might be, my, might be Tom's A Fleur de Page, Lire et voir le texte de la Renaissance, a book from 2015 that describes how to read early modern texts, but also why we might read them in that way. In the introduction, which is not explicitly about Montaigne, although a later chapter is, Tom shares uh, an impassioned art poétique detailing a specific naïveté espiègle that a modern reader might take up to democratize the 16th century text. Tom's earliest work on Montaigne in the late 1970s laid the groundwork for much of what would follow both in his own work and in the field. Already in what I think is his earliest article about Montaigne, though he can correct me in due course, Montaigne's Gascogne, Textual Regionalism in the Essay, published in 1977 in MLN, we see the mixture of erudition and playfulness that characterizes his scholarship in a careful reading of Dibwatte, an essay that limps, says Tom, that performs an aerial scansion of visual and oral patterns, conduire, Comprimé, contraire, contradiction, convier, and so forth. A crescendo of cacophony that thwarts the argumentative power of a discourse and which Tom follows to the vanishing point of a poem by Taboureau des Accords that I shall not quote here. A year later, Tom published in Diacritics one of the very first studies titled simply Cataparalysis that put the essay in dialogue with Derrida, performing what Tom uh, uh, calls a graft of two authors who are both mobile and immobile, ever between constitutive of an incision of character as parcels of energy within, beyond, and below themselves. In both, we find an incessant essay of entropy and its denial. The novel approach is then tried out on the chapter Décoche, and it is truly uh, a dazzling reading and dazzlingly illustrated, a reading that has not aged today. Tom is the author of numerous books, including The Graphic Unconscious and Early Modern Writing from 1992, The Self-Made Map from 1996, An Errant Eye from 2011, and A Fleur de Page uh, that I just mentioned. Montaigne occupies a privileged place in each of these books. In A Graphic Unconscious, a book that truly uh, explodes what we can do with a 15th century, 15th century, 500-year-old text, Tom offers readings of De l'Exercitation and Des Coches that focus on verbal movement, both uh, born of montage and displacement of printed letters, showing us how Montaigne binds together the visual, the graphic, and the sonorous elements that are at play. In The Self-Made Map, which studies the cartographic writing of a number of authors and a rich back and forth between maps and texts between map makers and authors, Tom returns to the essay in a chapter titled Montaigne, a Political Geography of the Self. Montaigne, writes Tom, produces a world of his own, a textual geography that mimics and supplants the national space in which the essay are circulating. 
The sheer bulk, set ama, of reflections piled up and ordered together makes up a verbal region that the author can survey, map out, and traverse as he likes. An errant eye switches the focus to poetry and topography and includes a beautiful chapter that takes up Montaigne's swallows, or arondelle, that he discusses in the Apologie, a moment that says Tom sets in motion a rhapsody of natural history that extends throughout most of 212. Swallows, who compass their nests without recourse to Euclidean reason, come to figure here architects, geometers, practical scientists, but also volatiles that fly above the earth while sharing traits with burrowing or subterranean creatures. Tom is my guest today. Thank you so much for being with us, Tom. So I'm just going to uh, explain very quickly. Um, in each episode of this series, uh, we have three moments, so to speak. Uh, in the first moment, um, uh, I'll be asking Tom my by now familiar Montaigne questionnaire, the same questions I ask uh, everybody. Uh, and the goal is really just to open up a sort of friendly, informal uh, uh, moment uh, in which we get to know a reader of Montaigne. Uh, in a second moment, Tom will be presenting some of his forthcoming work on Montaigne, uh, which I've already had the pleasure of reading and enjoying and certainly look forward to discussing. And the third moment, uh, we open up uh, to everybody who's here uh, for a Q&A. And I invite you uh, already to please enter your questions or comments or thoughts in the Q&A box at the bottom of your Zoom screen in French or English. And uh, when we get to that part, I will read out the questions uh, and we will uh, discuss. So let me um, first unmute Tom or request to unmute Tom. Uh, I think you have, there we go. Yeah, good. Well, thank you, Tom. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, thank, uh, thank you, Philip. Uh, uh, it's an absolute delight to be back, uh, even, uh, even if... Uh, uh, through distance uh, means to NYU, which has uh, uh, been very, very dear to my heart over, over my whole career. I should say that uh, 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 I first met uh, Michel Beaujou in Avignon in 1966 in my, toward the end of the, my first year of graduate study, and that became a friendship that lasted the duration of a life. In fact, I saw him at dinner with him uh, several weeks before he died, uh, and uh, uh, he he in fact with uh, Miroir d'Ancre, with uh, uh, with uh, with his work that has spanned the whole range of of literature, love of literature, has really had been a, uh, a north star mm. in in my firmament. And I uh, say I would say the same Tom Bishop too, in fact, whom I met as a as a, a grad student when he came to Wisconsin in 1964, gave a brilliant lecture on Pito F. Unbelievable, <laughs> unbelievable work. And again, I won't say anything about Judy Miller because Judy uh, 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 had, had the horrible task of directing our daughter's doctoral dissertation <laughs> on Elin Sixu. And, uh, uh, and, and she was just absolutely lovely. And we, again, we followed one another from, in fact, I think from Wisconsin to, uh, uh, to New York. So uh, there's just so many uh, 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 friends uh, that uh, it just becomes impossible to name them all. And then, and then that the pleasure of being with uh, 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 in, the, in the Maison Francaise uh, and in fact, joking around with a person I call Ludo, uh, because we uh, tend to be very ludic together, uh, Ludovic Cortad on cinema. And so it just, uh, it goes on. It's just, again, it's just a thrill and a delight, uh, a delight to be, to be on hand. So now let's see, did you ask the question of uh, uh, how I became, uh, what, uh, what is the... Uh, so yeah, so, so when, when did you, um, yeah, when, why, how did you come to read Montaigne yeah. the first time? Yeah. I always like to use the uh, uh, the epigraph to La Légende des Siècles, uh, where Hugo uh, 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 says, "La vision d'où est sortie ce livre?" And uh, so, where did all this come from? Uh, when I was, I think, uh, thirteen or fourteen, my brother uh, 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 passed me uh, uh, Donald Frame's uh, translation of the essays. He says, "Look at this." Uh, my brother's an artist. He was not a scholar at all. Uh, in fact, that's one. Uh, that's a diptych of his. One of his uh, diptych painting of his that's here. Uh, uh, he said, "Look at this," and it was uh, two six. It was uh, uh, de l'exercitation uh, of practice, and uh, and he said, "This is an incredible essay in which the author uh, falls from his uh, horse and is taken for dead and then brought back." He said, "You have to read this," and then uh, I saw the. 
uh, the translation and it and, and had sinew and force and bone that I had hadn't seen in translations and then um, it was not by chance that uh, uh, that I went on to uh, uh, to uh, 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 to Columbia to work with Donald Frame and I did uh, my master's dissertation under his uh, extraordinary uh, uh, extraordinary direction he was sort of a uh, real mentor uh, for me in this process and so and that's again that that's probably how it uh, how it started and uh, and then I worked on uh, uh, Montaigne and Descartes as an undergraduate and then uh, lately just one uh, anecdotally uh, 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 two years three years ago uh, the uh, colleagues at the uh, uh, at the for the Norton uh, lectures that featured uh, three filmmakers. Uh, uh, Wim Wenders, Fred Weissman, and uh, Agnes Valda uh, came. Agnes was there, and I'd known her since uh, 2010. And uh, in fact, she stayed at the Kirkland House where I'd been. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and then uh, colleagues uh, uh, said, "Would gee, Tom, would you please sit next to uh, next to uh, uh, Agnes for the for the dinner? Because I think your French will probably." Uh, smooth, uh, smooth palate for everyone. And so I sat next to her and then I said, well, you know, um, uh, Agnès, every time I see uh, uh, La Pointe Courte, I keep thinking of Valérie and, uh, and uh, Le Cimetière Marin, La Mer, La Mer, Toujours Recommencé. Suddenly, she cites verbatim the first 30 lines of that poem, age 89, perfect diction, perfect diction. Uh, and uh, then uh, I went on and I said uh, to her, well, uh, uh, actually, I started working on Montaigne and my undergraduate works on Montaigne and Rembrandt. She's, oh, my God, this is exactly what I've been working on. And then, uh, uh, this is, uh, then, and then in fact, then uh, things really, really uh, came, uh, came uh, together. Second anecdote, if you like, uh, uh, in 1976, uh, uh, um, Lucette Finas uh, invited us to uh, have uh, uh, a Sunday dinner with Jacques Derrida at his place in uh, Ries Orangis. So here I was uh, going there, uh, and and uh, and then Jacques, who was extremely sociable and amenable, said, uh, "Ask the." The, ask the standard question, sur quoi est-ce que vous travaillez? And so I said, j'écris sur les essais de Montaigne. And then he responded, ah, oh, uh, oui, on est au même diapason, parce que j'aurais voulu, j'aurais voulu faire, uh, écrire sur Montaigne, mais justement pour une raison de politique, uh, il s'avère que j'ai uh, dû choisir Heidegger. Uh, mais justement, uh, je vais revenir. And he did in, uh, in the politique de l'amitié. And so Montaigne, in fact, was, was very, very uh, dear to him uh, as well. And so this, in fact, uh, sort of fostered enthusiasm and then, and then it, it got a friendship uh, uh, started and in fact lasted all, all the way up to uh, uh, the, in 2004 when he went to another world. So uh, uh, anyway, uh, uh, that's I guess that's where it all uh, that's where it all began, and uh, uh, and it hasn't stopped uh, uh, since then. And uh, what I have prepared for today is uh, uh, is a uh, is taken from a piece that will uh, uh, come out in uh, an issue of Lendemain that Dominique Bertrand uh, has edited. Uh, and uh, her title was Lire uh, les essais en éclat. Qu'est-ce que, qu que l'éclat? Uh, and so I tried to, uh, try to uh, interpret uh, this in such a way that, that you read Montaigne in bits and pieces and fragments and uh, with, uh, with uh, signifiers that sometimes concatenate and that sometimes don't. And then that produces a, a reading that in effect, uh, as Philip has just said so well, is, uh, is audio visual, if you like. In fact, the, we have to see the essays as you go. So let me, uh, so I just get going with it, with a power, with a PowerPoint here, uh, Philip. Um, uh, let's, can I ask you a couple more questions first? Yeah. <laughs> And then, so is there, um, 
uh, is there a chapter of the essay that uh, that you keep returning to, Tom? Two six. I always go back to two six uh, uh, to uh, um, uh, to the to the moment when uh, uh, he says, "Chacun discipline uh, uh, doit avoir la discipline uh, pour uh, uh, si l'on veut uh, uh, s'apprivoiser à la mort, il faut uh, s'y avoisiner." And so just the, the pun on avoisiner and uh, um, approximer, and then this relation of chacun discipline says Pliny doit avoir discipline. And so uh, I've seen some editors look through the natural history and says, yes, it's right here, but it's right on the surface. And so Montaigne is in effect is extraordinarily superficial, and you have to and you have to read him as I've tried to say a fleur de page. And so th this is where in effect the the, the genealogy of the the, the the genius of the writing is uh, because it, it takes so much pleasure in its own articulation. Again, as he says uh, so well in uh, uh, the opening uh, pages of uh, of. Again, we're we're like we're like convicts in a prison. We say three nine, and then every oh yes, yes. <laughs> so so uh, 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 he he uh, doit avoir des corrections, les lois de correction contre les contre les écrivains ineptes, comme il y a contre les fainéants et les vagabonds. Uh, he can't stand lousy writers, <laughs> and, so, <laughs> and so that's become a, a rule of measure. Uh, 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 for me, again, if uh, I go through it, get to a paragraph and it's poorly written, oh, uh -uh. <laughs> I don't have time anymore for this. So, uh, uh, so that's again, again, that's uh, that's part that's part of the uh, the rule. Again, trois neuf de la vanité is also an, a piece to which I always return, uh, and uh, uh, and then the. Um, uh, well then, then, then I then it's, it goes it goes pretty much everywhere. But those are really the couple of the major plot points in the in mm -hmm. the reading. So and I read and reread them. So okay. Why, why do you think we should read Montaigne in in 2023, Tom? Is uh, there one reason? Many reasons? Is it harder to uh, to read him in 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 our current moment? I think not because uh, uh, if you take if you take Montaigne uh, as a as a uh, uh, historical object doesn't work, but you have to turn Montaigne into a critical object. And, you, and it's through the, through the displacement of, of Montaigne into our moment in which his own strangeness becomes uh, very heuristic and then it becomes a way of, of looking, uh, looking at things and looking at how, how, uh, uh, how a reflection uh, uh, paradoxically uh, general narcissistic self-reflection is 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 in fact the contrary of that, and in mm -hmm. fact it's a it's a reflection on the state of the world. Again, if we want to be ecological, all you have to do is go back through the beginning of uh, of uh, of three nine, in which he says that the, the world is just is in a is in a horrible ecological state. He says the same in the Cannibal, and then it becomes the greatest emphasis, I think. Uh, in uh, De Cush in uh, uh, in uh, in three six as well. So so in fact the, the ecology of the essays is found both in in what he sees of the status status of the world. I think uh, uh, you have uh, brought it out brilliantly brilliantly in Exterranean, uh, and that uh, French readers will very very much appreciate uh, 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 the book when it. Uh, as I said, is under yellow and, and red cover. I think it's in the months ahead. It looks beautiful. And, the, and again, let me just say something to people who are here. Read that postscript. Read the postscript. It is. It is. It just a. It is a. It is. A, it scintillates, uh, and it scintillates because it disquiets. And this is where I think Montaigne is is actual in fact by the the disquieting process. Other thing I would say, uh, why Montaigne nowadays. Uh, uh, Montaigne, again, I tried to say this in the uh, Oxford Companion in a little essay called Montaigne and Alterity. Mm -hmm. he, he works on, he complicates uh, uh, the, the theme that is almost a bugaboo nowadays of identity. Mm -hmm. And he calls uh, identity, in effect, a, a function of alterity. And if you, uh, uh, if you just think of psychoanalysis 101, the self uh, that would be self-identical is a function of everything that is other. 
Mm. Look at the great moment in, in Varda's film, Le Glaneur et la Glaneuse, in which she goes to uh, uh, Jean Laplanche's uh, property, uh, and he was the owner of the Chateau de Pomar, a great, great Pinot Noir in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, just south of the Côte d'Or. Uh, and, uh, uh, and then he says in one sentence what psychoanalysis is. He says the function of the other. And this is what Montaigne is constantly, constantly doing. But please see that, see that moment in the film uh, uh, in which, uh, in which uh, he, uh, uh, he expounds uh, uh, on uh, on uh, on alterity as the function of anything that we would otherwise call uh, the stabilizing effect of identity. And this is where I think the Montaigne of this is, is just uh, uh, is, is so modern, so mm -hmm. modern in that sense. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to ask you one last question, Tom, before yeah. we, we yeah. get to the meat of things or the... Um, yeah. So is, is there a book or article uh, that, uh, that you didn't write uh, that you would recommend to others? Uh, that has to do with Montaigne. Uh, I think Po. Uh, I think it was, uh, and and Jean Ray's work. I think Montaigne. I think is uh, is crucial. And and then Po and Montaigne and melancholy. I think is a is a is a terrific terrific piece. And then uh, you can again glean through the pages of uh, of uh, the person we used to call Staro uh, Starobinsky's uh, Montaigne Mouvement, which in effect is uh, is. Uh, 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 has a beautiful uh, flow and uh, it's a nice, beautiful phenomenology of the of the uh, phenomenological reading of the essays as well. Mm -hmm. uh, there's lots of good work uh, I think that is being done uh, 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 on the uh, on the essays and in fact are doing close close reading again that in fact are turning it into a contemporary and critical uh, a critical object. Thank you, Tom. Thank you for jouer le jeu de mon questionnaire. So, so uh, allez, on va on continue à s'éclater. Okay. Uh, tell okay. us about the éclat, Tom. Okay. Uh, let's see. I had this piece in French. I don't know that I should just walk through it in in English, but uh, 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 by uh, by addressing the um, the uh, some of the slides, I just find it rather inert just to 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 just to read uh, a text without the without the uh, um, interference of, of images. Uh, and so let's let's just see how far how far we go and, and what how it is uh, how it as again in the words of a, of a colleague and friend that uses all the time Fred Jameson, how it shakes out. <laughs> so uh, uh, let's see. So I get this. Uh, so now I start to share. Is this the share mm -hmm. screen? Yeah, yeah, okay, share screen. Okay, then uh, uh, let's see, share. Is this a uh, little uh, essay? Let's see, I guess this should be go like this, I think. Let's see. Um, uh, I have to get to the uh, get to get the PowerPoint up. Um, are we there? Perfect. Okay. Thank so, you. Uh, so, uh, lire les essais en éclat. Again, uh, this was a title that Dominique uh, uh, gave gave me uh, uh, for this issue, uh, and uh, and so I did what every uh, every person always does. I, I went to the Concordance. I went to the uh, uh, Philippe de Zan's, uh, uh wonderful site at the University of Chicago and saw the recurrence of the word éclat. And I said to myself, "I am not going to. I am not going to simply list éclat and then do an essay based on its citations. It's it's cited only six times in the essays, and then uh, and then uh, Montaigne is very very." Uh, 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 critical of what he calls to vivre en éclat. He does not like this. We'll see this torture at the end. So, so I wanted to work otherwise, and I wanted to do this through uh, reference to uh, uh, to a, a concept that um, uh, I think is just beautifully uh, presented in uh, in Maurice Blanchot uh, in uh, L'Entretien Infini. And so, what we have here uh, is. Uh, 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 are the proofs of the essay. We have a wonderful uh, uh, Blanchot archive in the Houghton Library, 18 boxes of letters and forms, but also the proofs of, uh, of L'Entretien Infini. 
and it's uh, and it's uh, in this chapter of Parole de Fragment that has, has just belabored me for years and years, and how how words are are uh, or speech in effect is fragmentary in that it is both seen and written, and then it uh, aggregates and disaggregates, and then it becomes contrary to itself. It contradicts itself. And it uh, it can't be uh, can't be seized, and it has a lot to do in that same chapter of uh, um, uh, of a, what he calls a relation d'inconnu, and it's that very same formula that uh, another sort of mentor of, of mine, um, Guy Rosolato, uh, put forward in uh, in his concept of the relation d'inconnu, what a relation of the unknown, uh, relation of unknown. He doesn't say relation de l'inconnu, because then if you have l'inconnu, l'inconnu est connu, but relation d'inconnu, and uh, it has to do with uh, the, the fact that we uh, we don't know, uh, 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 we don't know uh, uh, what and where uh, uh, so many things are. We have no idea. We don't know anything about our birth. We don't know anything about what uh, will be what will be our our death. And in fact, the for the analyst, uh, the uh, one can be crushed by that thought, or else one can move 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 forward. And I think this relation d'inconnu is what imbues uh, uh, imbues the essays, and it is I think uh, brought forward so beautifully in uh, in Blanchot's work that in fact uh, helps us read the essays in this way. And so I just wanted to have us see uh, how much doubt. Uh, 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 Blanchot brings uh, to this in his uh, in his maniacal uh, rewriting of uh, of of his work. So he puts in these these little snippets of paper that are typed in black and uh, ink, and then in red ink, and it's very same, just like the uh, just like the uh, Exemplaire de Bordeaux, uh, fifteen eighty. It's maniacal, maniacal treatment of his own words, and so, and so then he uh, there is the uh, uh, the beginning of it uh, where he says la réalité sans l'énergie disloquante de la poésie qu'est-ce que c'est, uh, and then he quotes uh, René Char uh, uh, in uh, uh, in his. Uh, uh, and some work of uh, 1962, La Parole en Archipel, beautiful formulation of, a, of, of, of speech that in effect is an archipelago that's, that is in a scatter of islands, but also is an originary calling, an archipel, appel, appel, archipel. And so this is where uh, this comes, uh, comes forward, but I just wanted to get... Uh, uh, get us to get us a sense of the way the way that this parole de fragment uh, might bear on uh, on uh, on our reading of uh, of the essays. So uh, that I'm using as a background uh, here, and then uh, and then uh, and then we just we can't go to Montaigne without passing through his tower. Uh, I hope that uh, everyone uh, here uh, uh, has been or will have been or tends to go uh, to the tower because it is, if I may use a cliche of our moment, it is an experience. Uh, uh, <laughs> ex, uh, for Montaigne, experience de l'experience, uh, de uh, what is it's an essay, an essay is an experience. Uh, uh, I've had many experiences, I've written many experiences, beaucoup d'essais, uh, exagium and so on, but it's also expérire, that which comes out of death, relation d'inconnu. So uh, here is in the month, uh, month of May, the tower, uh, and um, it's all that remains of, of the chateau. And then uh, when I went in uh, to the chateau, uh, there you see the stairwell in the back, I happened upon a cat. This was crazy, crazy. Qui sait si je joue à ma chat ou ma chat joue à moi, as if the cat is playing with me or if I'm playing with a cat. Uh, and, so, uh, and so this was going, going right back to, to 12. Uh, where, in effect, he calls uh, the relation of uh, of uh, uh, of the human and the animal into question. And here was this cat, and uh, uh, I quickly wrote to uh, a friend. Let's see, you have to remind his name. He did Les Poutres de Montaigne on Montaigne's uh, uh, beams. Um, 
It'll come to me in a second. His name will come forward. Alan Rigaud? Yes, Alain Rigaud. Alain Rigaud. I wrote to him. I said, look, I'm here. Look at this. And then he said, ah, oh, Tom, ah, oh, je vois que tu es un Aquitaine. And, so, <laughs> and, then, uh, and then he knew this cat's name. He put it there. So this is how how crazy we get uh, with this. And he said, so so there, uh, that was what I first saw when getting into the tower. I don't have, I could show other pictures of the, of his room, but I thought just for the sake of, uh, sake of alacrity, I just get to the, uh, to the essays uh, here themselves and try and work with, uh, with what it is to, to read in uh, a plot. But we look at, uh, I just have here two uh, on the on the left side, the um, the title page uh, of the Houghton copy of the 1588 edition, and then on the right side, um, uh, a copy of of Montaigne's uh, uh, the Exemplaire de Bordeaux, and it's there uh, where we see how he in effect is uh, sets out to change uh, all this with uh, with this marking uh, where. Uh, where he uh, 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 writes out the uh, uh, the subtitle uh, Cinquième édition augmentée d'un troisième livre et de 600 additions uh, uh, avec uh, avec deux additions aux deux premiers. So this is because in fact he is working on on something that is. Uh, that, is, that is coming forward. And then uh, as uh, we, we showed in, uh, uh, I guess in the classes I uh, taught with Henri Zerner in, in art history, this is a very Bellefontaine, Fontainebleau uh, uh, surround. And I think that the, that the surround itself has a lot to do with the beginning of, uh, of the L'Amitié of, uh, of 129. So in effect, uh, uh, j'ai uh, j'ai un peintre uh, j'ai chez moi un peintre uh, et uh, j'ai décidé de, de, de l'en suivre and then he has a he has a uh, he puts grotesque around an empty center and so this in effect is almost an emblem of uh, of what he's getting at in that uh, that axial point uh, of uh, of the first volume but we see it see it I think very very clearly here now uh, I just want to get to the 1595 edition and um, uh, repeat what uh, we we just shared before uh, the the session uh, when I was in uh, Poitiers working on uh, le printemps d'hiver uh, conteur uh, a beautiful writer in the in the tradition of the Histoire Tragique, uh, uh, who has four, uh, five, uh, five, uh, five chapters, and then the last chapter is the source of Two Gentlemen of Verona, Shakespeare, Shakespeare read this. Uh, anyway, I was working on that, and then I uh, needed a quote from Montaigne, and so uh, I went to the hemicycle uh, of the uh, municipal uh, library, and I said, Madame, est-ce que par hasard, vous auriez parmi vos usuels euh, une copie des essais de Montaigne Ah, oh, assurément, monsieur. Oui, oui, euh, son, euh, oh, oh, le, voici. And then, so she gives me her usual, uh, and it is the 1595 edition. <laughs> this is not great. It's wonderful. And so I rushed to the window uh, 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 that was nearest the desk and started taking pictures with, a, as I said, with Agfurt Chrome. And this is, this is, uh, this is what I got. And, uh, and so we see, uh, uh, we see the, 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 actually the, the sort of the axionometry of the essays if we, if we can uh, look to see how, uh, how he's going to put the l'amitié, again, the numbering is always a little off, he has de l'amitié 27 here, and then 29 sonnets d'Etienne de la Boissy at 28 here. Uh, and, and then the mistype, I think it's 26, but it should be 29. Uh, 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 but in effect, you have this relation of center and circumference, uh, what uh, Rudolf Arnheim calls the power of the center. But then uh, uh, as Francois Rigolo has said very, very beautifully, uh, where there is the center, Montaigne is eccentric, eccentric. So in fact, he uses the center to work against 
a center. And so, and so the the numbering, the placement of the essays, the geography of the essays, I think, is 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 quite uh, is quite um, uh, is is quite strategically uh, maneuvered. And here we have the uh, 1588 edition, where in effect uh, uh, the l'amitié is 28, and then 29, 29 sonnet. And so uh, then uh, toward the center, and then on one side, friendship, and on the other side, cannibals. So uh, who are Montaigne's friends? They're cannibals, and they are uh, they are uh, Etienne de la Boissy, who in effect is sort of afterwards is 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 elided from the essays, but in effect uh, or elided from that uh, from the um, his sonnets are elided from the uh, from the uh, later edition. But but we start to see this 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 geography, this cartography that is that is uh, is that is in the work. And uh, again, uh, you get toward the uh, the end of Cannibal, he calls the cannibals. Uh, uh, they call themselves moitié, and so they are they are halves of each other. And this is, in effect, borne out in the in the actual in the visual disposition of, of the text. And then the amitié is, is a have halving, if you like, and that he gets already from the famous line: "Why was he? Why did he work with? Uh, why did he uh, have the friendship with Abouissi? Parce que c'était lui, parce que c'était moi." Uh, uh, as uh, uh, as um, Ulrich Langer pointed out, and I think in um, in one of his books, it's a perfect Alexandrian, perfect Alexandrian. Parce que c'était lui, parce que c'était moi. And then he goes on to say that uh, the the friendship, in effect, is is completely modern because it has uh, no practical end. It is not uh, that is not based on Cicero, uh, where in effect uh, uh, you have an economic basis. The good friends make good. Uh, Good, good accounts make good friends. No, not at all. There's no relation of, of reciprocity uh, uh, and no debt. Uh, yeah. So this is what is so so crucial in this. And then we get it at the way that it's it's placed in the essay. Anyway, um, uh, what I uh, uh, wanted to work on uh, in in uh, in uh, in the éclat in working in the éclat uh, is. Uh, uh, are, are, the, are the way that uh, that uh, Montaigne deals with uh, with uh, words that uh, within words uh, words in effect that produce other words out of themselves in effect become uh, uh, paroles de fragment if you like and uh, 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 and then uh, thus in reading the essays uh, one constantly I think has to come backward and forward, forward and backward to re reread and then always look uh, again closely at the at the work. That's why the, 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 the Baldo copy I think is so important here. But he says already uh, in um, in uh, 313 here, uh, je branche plus volontiers en pays plat. I stumble uh, very willingly in a flat country. Comme certains chevaux que je connais qui chopent plus souvent en chemin uni. So, uh, uh, so this is the way that again he he says he travels. And it's almost a reflection on the way that uh, the reader uh, is invited to travel uh, uh, through the essays. And again, you see that final other sentence: "Qui ne dirait que les glos augmentent les doutes et l'ignorance?" And then it was there where he goes on to say: "Nous ne faisons que nous entrecloser." Uh, so we were constantly interglossing ourselves, but uh, in bits and pieces. And so, uh, uh, and 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 we stumble, but stumbling, in effect, is a is a uh, is productive. Other uh, word to get here: this term in in uh, in uh, in Montaigne, what is ordinaire? Uh, uh, the this the uh, ordinaire is uh, is. Um, is has to do with, with everyday life, if you like, which is an effect that um, uh, uh, intensely studied uh, nowadays. But in effect, will take on very corporal um, uh, connotations, as we'll see, I think, soon. Then let's see. Um, uh, uh, he goes on uh, here, and let's see. He is. Uh, uh, um, uh, I, I use this as a almost as a. Um, 
epigraph for most of the uh, work I do on Montaigne, and of course it's in right in the thick of three eight uh, de la de uh, 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 de, uh, uh, de la de conférer, uh, which uh, essay that Pascal said de l'incomparable art de conférer, an essay that Pascal uh, I think uh, read almost biblically uh, and. And then he uh, says it, at one point here, uh, 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 ce n'est pas à qui mettra dedans, mais à qui fera, uh, fera les plus belles courses. Autant peut faire le saut celui qui dit vrai que celui qui dit faux, car nous sommes sur la manière, non sur la matière du dire. So it's the, it's the manner uh, and not on the matter of the style, even though he's bringing matter and, ma uh, and manner uh, into, uh, into convergence here, just through the surface, uh, uh, the, the surface effect of the words, uh, uh, words that, he, that he's giving. Mon humeur est de regarder autant, uh, as much, not no longer plus, plus à la forme qu'à la substance. This is an effect uh, I think is just uh, is something that we need to uh, think about when we uh, constantly when we are working uh, with uh, with the essays here. Now, uh, just to get to the to the to the sense of a of a, of a of a fragment, a parole de fragment, we have uh, in in two twelve in the uh, Apologie uh, an es an essay that uh, one critic. Uh, is called an anti-essay. It is a, it is a, in fact, it is a monster, a monstrous essay. It is an essay that, in effect, is I think it was, Philip is that about 180 pages? I think it's something like that. It's it is it is uh, endless. In a month. <laughs> so, uh, uh, and it follows it follows, of course, uh, uh, to uh, eleven de la cruauté and uh, Montaigne's very very. Uh, uh, critical uh, uh, um, uh, take on on the practice of cruelty. Again, it's, it is uh, it is, um, uh, it is it is it is what in effect he, he rejects. Then he uh, then I think that almost precipitates. Here I, I think I'm I'm going to follow V Villet. Villet, uh, you know you maybe you don't like Villet, uh, uh, but you cannot. You cannot discount Villet uh, in uh, Les Sources et l'Evolution des Essais. Uh, uh, Here's Villet. We, wasn't he blind, Philip? I think uh, Villet was blind. Oh, and then he, I uh, I think he, he read that he read Montaigne almost in Braille. And, uh, and then uh, he, uh, uh, he hypothesized that, in effect, you see a, uh, a moment uh, where Montaigne starts to write in short bits and pieces. In the first, in the first uh, volume, he finds a certain uh, rhapsody and a style in one twenty six in uh, in the uh, Institution des Enfants. In fact, where style becomes uh, une sévère douceur, if you like, and then uh, and then he, je cherche un parler non uh, non plaideresque, non fratresque, mais uh, uh, soldatesque. Uh, come dit sweet on de Jules César. So, so in fact, he's finding a style here, and and then uh, and then as the as the essays develop, as um, as uh, uh, Villet shows, they uh, he goes goes into a into a, 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 a stoic. I say becomes stoic in the moment of the uh, intensification of the wars of religion, and then. The uh, then he writes the uh, uh, apologie, which in effect is uh, bears witness to this this uh, this, uh, this stoical uh, crisis, and then in effect is after that in the in the evolution of the essays, in effect he becomes uh, uh, he becomes far more epicurean, and uh, and then becomes sensuous, becomes Socratic, if you like, even though Socrates is a is a figure whom he whom he. Uh, uh, treats uh, in, in full contradiction. But I want, just wanted to get to this here because uh, 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 the first sentence, c'est à la vérité, une très utile et grande uh, partie que la science, ceux qui la méprisent, témoignent assez de leurs bêtises. There, that 
the poetry of méprise, bêtise, and uh, the 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 text will become uh, a uh, uh, a uh, an, a eulogy or a, a peon to 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 stupidity in a sense, which in effect becomes almost uh, a reflection of the Cusanian philosophy of learned ignorance, if you like, in effect. But it, it, it is what goes out uh, and uh, uh, reaches into the uh, uh, animal world and the uh, um, and the uh, inorganic world as well. That's why it in effect is a, a crucial text for uh, any anyone who's working in contemporary uh, contemporary um, uh, uh, issues of literature and ecology. Again, there's there's again that response to Montaigne and then the, the why read Montaigne. Now, I think uh, Louisa McKenzie has done some good work um, uh, on that and and others as well. But in effect, what he's getting, what I wanted to get at here is the way he starts the essay, and he's in his in his in his house in his maison. Again, that's his family. And then he, you know, it goes to his father, uh, and uh, his father, in effect, built the chateau. But uh, 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 but you see, as the essay goes, that there uh, that there is a logement. But throughout the essay, there is no place that one uh, can can really be. There is no place to loger. And so I think we have this here, and you see the arrow uh, where, in effect, he adds uh, what it is. There is no place. There's no there's no place that in fact is ours. In fact, we, we're always strange or strangers to where we are. And uh, and I think the essay is uh, is done that way because in fact, one is going to be constantly dislodged um, uh, uh, wherever one is in it. And then look how he, how in fact he's, he is uh, uh, annotating it. Again, I went through it at one point and uh, listed the, the names, I think 12 or 14, Times he, he's talking about what is the loge, uh, 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 it, it go, and it goes it goes uh, goes on and through uh, uh, here and let's see uh, then this is uh, which is, I think this is one of the uh, uh, then this is one area of effect oh, uh, um, oh this is a uh, this is now I'm shifting to an uh, to more to the fragmentary moment here. Uh, where, let's see, a, I have to get this, wait, I'll get this back here one second. Uh, 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 I want to get back to, uh, uh, to, uh, uh, back to the, to the, uh, to the eclat here. And uh, I'm jumping toward uh, one of the most famous pages uh, of the essays. And uh, uh, this is, again, when I used the old Playard edition, it was page 175, 176. Uh, or, or, or 876 something like that. and uh, and uh, this is uh, where he uh, 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 talks about poetry and the way he composes but he composes in in sort of éclat in bits and pieces and so he says cette farcissure est un peu hors de mon thème je m'égare mais plutôt par licence que par mégarde mes fantaisies se suivent mais Parfois, c'est de loin, et euh, le regarde, et se regarde, euh, mais d'une vue oblique. What I think we're getting there uh, is um, is a uh, uh, is a praise of of an oblique reading, or of an anamorphotic reading, or of what a reading that uh, uh, Mireille Huchon, in her work on Rabelais uh, and Berwald de Verville calls this steganography, steganography, where in effect you have to look at the essays from an angle, one angle, this angle, and then that which is oblique is also oblique, uh, which in effect has to do with, with uh, oblivion, because you forget in order to come back uh, to the essays. In fact, uh, I think it's Bruno in the Histoire de la langue française, volume two, uh, doesn't uh, remind me, Philip, if I'm correct here, that there were all kinds of debates around what are called uh, ouisme uh, in the 16th century, where uh, uh, you don't know whether you say ou or uh. So one of the current jokes among uh, uh, lawyers was, uh, j'ai laissé mon baudin à la bibliothèque, ou j'ai laissé mon boudin à la bibliothèque. 
<laughs> so, <laughs> so, uh, so, uh, so oblique and oblique, I think, are, are, he's, he's playing on this uh, in his different, uh, different, uh, uh, in his in his speech. Because remember, he's Gascon. He's not French. He's he works between France and Gascon, and then and then his and then uh, and his Latin. And so, <laughs> so uh, I think when he says. Uh, the stuffing uh, uh, is uh, is a little outside of my thing theme. All de, all de is is uh, is. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get next. Uh, get the next slide. Uh, is uh, how do I do this? Uh, let's see. I get a. Uh, uh, it seems stuck here. Let's see. I gotta get to. Oops. Oh, come. What is going on? Come on. Come on. Uh, this is quit music. Uh, uh, let's see. I can get this uh, there. Uh, 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 he uh, said, "Farci sur uh, est un peu, un peu hors de mon thème. Je m'égare." But he's going back to uh, ord. Uh, this is it's a theme uh, of uh, of uh, uh, it's an excremental uh, a moment. It's what. Uh, it's what uh, uh, Giselle Mathieu Castellani so brilliantly called uh, in coprography, uh, a coprogra coprography. Uh, uh, and, uh, and so he's punning here on, on, uh, on, uh, on the, uh, uh, on the uh, hors de, hors de mon, mon thème. Uh, so uh, he's going back to what he did already earlier in the uh, uh, in the beginning of the essay, which we'll get back to again. I don't know why I put this in here, but it's a slide that in fact is probably well out of place, but it has to do with this axionometry uh, of eccentric uh, uh, um, uh, centering, where he has 29 sonnets, and then of course, then he cuts them out and he leaves a blank space. In effect, it starts to, it starts to get more and more sense of a fragment that's here uh, already when he uh, uh, when he uh, works. Now, uh, just to just to uh, continue on it, uh, he uh, uh, I just uh, will take this uh, 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 beautiful ink stain uh, uh, in the in the Bordeaux copy where he is is working on the Trois Commerce. Again, he says uh, now and again that the titles of his chapters all, uh, don't always uh, uh, resume what uh, what they say, but they indicate it by some kind of a mark uh, or a sign that in effect is not verbal, but in effect is visual. And we get this in 3.3. Three. Uh, de Trois Commerce, volume 3, chapitre 3, de Trois Commerce. And you start to read the essay, and then uh, if you are an if you are one of his uh, an intelligent lecteur, uh, the three elements will be uh, uh, will be uh, um, uh, 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 books, women, and friends. Uh, women in the center, uh, and then you read it diligently, and then uh, he will say, um, uh, I don't have it on the slide here. Le méditer est uh, un fort riche étude pour celui qui veut uh, forger son esprit, something in that sense, but or to meubler son esprit. Uh, uh, le méditer, but le méditer is uh, le méditer. Uh, it is the reflection on threes. Uh, and so uh, what it is to, uh, to negotiate, to mediate. This is, I think, a great essay on mediation, hence on media. Uh, and and so uh, it's both four and it's three, and we get this uh, right in the first sentence. Il ne faut pas se clouer si fort à ses humeurs et complexions. Again, how many humors? Four. How many complexions? Four. So uh, how many, what is the chapter? Three. So then the, 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 the torsion begins uh, with this relation of the number and the language. C'est savoir s'appliquer à divers usages. Uh, uh, remember later on, I think in the essay, where he, uh, uh, he, he starts to describe his tower where he's writing. You know, again, it's the most open, the tower is the most open place. Uh, it's the coldest. And then 
euh, il says, car ma maison est juchée sur un tertre, comme son nom indique. My house is, is uh, perched on a hillock, as its name indicates. Tertre. Terre, terre. Three, three. And then tertre is the anagram of être. <laughs> so uh, uh, it, 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 then, it, then, then you start to see how the words start to explode, éclat, uh, in, this, in this very sense. Again, uh, 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 then, um, uh, then uh, again, as we start to look at this relation of, um, of, uh, of fragments that maybe uh, will, will, will just jump out at you, uh, we can never, uh, uh, never uh, 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 fail to come back to the incipit to uh, the, the, to uh, uh, um, book five of Sur des vers de Virgile of the third volume, but it's chapitre cinq. So, vers Virgile, vers. A, ah, which inverts the V. A ah, mesure que les pansements utiles sont plus pleins, uh, plus graves, il t'exagère, et solides, ils sont aussi plus empêchants et plus onéreux. Plus uh, then, uh, 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 our late friend uh, uh, Michel Jeanne has written beautifully on this, on this beginning. And, uh, uh, but in effect, he's giving us a monogram. Uh, and he talks about a monogram uh, later on in the essay, his essay and monograms that are there. But in effect, I think it has to do with with this uh, uh, with this uh, grapheme, uh, parole de fragment, if you like, that could be bisexual. Uh, it could be the uh, the sign of the of the pubis of a woman, or it could be the penetrating. Uh, 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 penile uh, edge of a writing instrument. Uh, and so in effect, this, uh, and then he will accumulate through the first part of the essay, all kinds of words that in effect start to start to scintillate by virtue of their, of their, of their, let's say their, their, uh, um, their, their vitality, again, their, and their, uh, uh, sans vertu gal, as he says later on. So, yeah. so in effect, so the, this, this, this in effect becomes part and parcel of the of the process that's given. Then, um, uh, then just to see it further, I just want to go back to uh, the incipit of the uh, Ramanite, and it is here where uh, uh, we have one of the uh, most remarkable. Uh, 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 bits and pieces uh, uh, that uh, uh, dictate uh, the writing. So uh, he ends the uh, uh, de l'art de conférer uh, uh, in uh, in, um, in, uh, in in self doubt. Voilà ce que la mémoire me représente en gros et assez hein, certainement tout jugement. Uh, uh, en, en gros ou en gros, sans lâche et un, uh, imparfait. De la vanité, chapitre 9. Uh, il n'est à l'aventure aucune plus expresse que d'en écrire si vainement. So, I think that the term aventure, you see, uh, uh, is, uh, it gives us, it's not just perchance, uh, or by chance, or uh, uh, but it is has to do with uh, a commerce here. Okay, uh, what is it? Michael Nerlich in his book on uh, on uh, ideology of adventure has shown that since uh, Chrétien de Troyes, uh, an aventure is a commercial enterprise. Uh, an aventure, it's an adventure. Uh, oh, it's a venture. It's capital enterprise. Montaigne, in fact, is going to devalorize that inherited. Uh, sense because it's a spendthrift essay. So he, uh, uh, that, but then the relation of aventure to vanité, vent, avant, avant. Uh, and then he will be de dealing with time before and time after uh, throughout the essay. But in fact, it's, I think it's directed by, uh, uh, by this play of the signifier that's here that in fact we would in our, in, in, in our, um, 
uh, idiom uh, called the unconscious of the text. In fact, uh, uh, then, ce que la divinité, we know this all by heart, uh, nous en a si divinement exprimé, devrait être soigneusement et continuellement médité, médité par les gens d'entendement. This meditation, this mediation, if you like, that is given. And then, uh, and then the famous sentence, qui ne voit que j'ai pris une route par laquelle sans cesse et son travail, uh, without labor, but also without travel as well, because he doesn't go anywhere. J'irai autant qu'il y, qu y aura entre et papier au monde. So this, in effect, is, this is, in effect, his, his adventure, uh, but it's a scriptural adventure. Uh, then, uh, just to, just to uh, 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 work through it, uh, I wanted to get to, uh, again, I'm repeating maybe what I've uh, said before, but it's so good that it just, just the, the text just is, it's just uh, vibrates so well. And when he goes back toward the end of the essay, uh, uh, in uh, thinking of time and space from Rome up to his own uh, distressed moment in the 1580s, And I started, le soin des morts nous est en recommandation. Or, j'étais nourri dès mon enfance avec ceux ici. J'ai eu connaissance des affaires de Rome longtemps avant que je l'ai eu de ceux de ma maison, my family, my, my place. Je savais le Capitole et son plan avant que je susse le Louvre et le Tibre avant la Seine. Uh, Uh, so he saw, he knew Rome, he knew the past, he knew this other, uh, this other world before, uh, avant, avant, avanité, uh, 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 almost beforeness, avanité, avant que je l'ai eu de ceux de ma maison, je savais le capitole et son plan. Plan here can be both its setting, but it's also its map. Its map is here. Uh, it's mapping mon, son plan. Uh, uh, avant, there's avant again. Uh, he's, he's obsessed with avant. Que je suce le Louvre et le Tibre avant la Seine. Uh, 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 love that imperfect subjunctive. <laughs> it's the best, greatest imperfect subjunctive I've ever seen. Uh, that in effect is a present indicative. <laughs> Because I, I, <laughs> I, I knew the capital, uh, which in effect is a dome. It's a breast-like form. Avant que je suce, before I suck the Louvre. So, <laughs> this is so je suce the Louvre. But what is the Louvre? It is, it is the Louvre. And so in effect, he <laughs> is displacing himself into the position of Romulus and Remus. <laughs> <laughs> by by bringing the Louvre and the Louvre into into the into the fact that he's being weaned, <laughs> it's being suckled here, uh, and then le, then le Tibre avant la Seine, very nice nice place names. He knows the geography well, but isn't Seine here also in Seine originaire? Isn't it a Seine primitive? It, it's perfectly consonant with psychoanalysis. Le Tibre avant la Seine. Then, j'ai plus, j'ai eu plus en tête, but tête, <laughs> tête. I've been sucking, tete. J'ai plus en tête. Les conditions et fortunes de Lucullus, Metellus et Scipion, euh, que je n'ai euh, d'aucun homme des nôtres. <laughs> He, uh, uh, so he's been, he's been, uh, he's been. Uh, he's been into sort of suckling these uh, these these figures, but Lucullus, Metullus, and Scipion are all again the, the great figures of the past. But they are portraits on coins, so all kinds of coins are coming in here of images of of, of portraits that are on, on Roman medallions, in effect. And so this is what he has on tête, uh, and then uh, and then he uh, goes on and collapses time uh, utterly into this uh, avant-ité and après-ité, if you like, beforeness and afterness. They've all, they're all dead. Ils sont très passés. Il si, eh bien, mon père, so is too, my father, and as entirely as them. Et s'est éloigné de moi et de la vie autant en 18 ans que cela 
on fait en 1600. So in effect, uh, uh, there is uh, in fact, uh, there's almost a collapse of, of what is before and what is now here. And in fact, I think that goes right back to that fragmentary title uh, uh, in, the, uh, in the beginning. Uh, again, I, I just sort of was, got so uh, wrapped up with this that I had to repeat one slide uh, after the other. And then this is, in fact, gets, uh, gets uh, um, uh, extended uh, when he starts to think of what it is to walk in the city, to get through the city, and then to be in another world. Je ne saurais, uh, pourquoi je ne saurais revoir si souvent? Again, the term in the essay, souvent, watch out. It has become what is under the, in the wind, souvent, souvent, avant, aventure, souvent. Uh, L'assiette de leur rue, there's the map, the setting of the streets, et de leur maison, et ses ruines profondes jusqu'aux antipodes. Alors, so in fact, he's going to the other end of the world que uh, je n'y uh, je ne m'y amuse. Il me plaît uh, de considérer leur visage, leur port et leurs vêtements. Je remâche. Again, they're in his mouth. He, in fact, is this orality is here. Je remâche. Uh, C'est un grand nom entre les dents et les fait retentir à mes oreilles. He's chewing his words. Uh, 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 it, it, it is absolutely sublime here. Uh, uh, and then he uh, he goes goes forward in the same sense again. I'm here's here's uh, uh, now I get uh, we'll, we'll we'll in fact I think we'll get toward the uh, so it's a, the last um, last section here. I wanted to go over this uh, extraordinarily Deridian uh, moment at the end of the uh, essay in which he uh, uh, reproduces this bull. Uh, this uh, this uh, document uh, that uh, apparently in the uh, biography, um, and I think it's in the uh, in the journal Le Voyage, uh, his secretary said uh, Montaigne uh, went really uh, all about in order to get. He wanted to get this uh, this uh, uh, this document of the eternal being an eternal citizen of Rome, and then uh, and then he plops it into the text. At the end, and, and in effect, in in plopping it in there as he does, uh, uh, in effect, he 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 turns himself into, into into almost into ridicule, and he also turns the turns the entire uh, text into what was uh, again what we we're calling this coprography before. So uh, so he has this uh, he reproduces the document uh, in a, a very sententious Latin and. Uh, and then uh, uh, as we read this uh, on the surface, we start to see time and again, the, uh, uh, the um, uh, abbreviation of the Senatus Populus, uh, uh, Populusque Romane, the, uh, uh, the Senate uh, um, and, uh, and uh, for the Senate of the Roman people, SPQL, uh, SPQL. So then uh, it continues. Uh, uh, senatus pecuel, pecuel, es pecuel, uh, es pecuel, uh, es pecuel scriba. Uh, and, and then what we were getting is, I think Montaigne, because it's a bull, uh, because it's vanité, it's windy, he's asking us to read this as es pecuel. Uh, uh, is it specular? Is it speculative? Or is it is it simply wind? Is it uh, spqr? <laughs> if you if you like, I once tendered a joke to a, a, a wonderful friend who was uh, oh we were classmates, undergraduate classmates. Uh, Hope Glidden was her name, just wonderful friend uh, who died very young, and. I, I, we were talking about Paris. We were together at the uh, Rabelais conference that you show in 2016, and, uh, and I took the 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 uh, subway ticket of the of the RATP, and I said, "Well, you can you can counterglass this as RATP. Uh, you can have uh, air in your farts." So, so uh, uh, it's almost the same thing. I think that uh, uh, that. Uh, 
that he's doing here uh, with uh, uh, these uh, this is ciphering. And so, in fact, it, in fact, it, it, the, the bull explodes the essay. It, uh, it, ça fait éclater, uh, l'essai, if you like. And then it, uh, uh, it uh, uh, becomes very, very similar, uh, uh, at least for, um, for readers of Derrida, to what he does at the end of uh, Signature Événement Context, uh, the Signature Event Context, where he puts uh, his own, he, he prints his own signature at the end. And so the signature is an event that one writes, signature even on text, text day meaning to write. So, so in effect, his signature is completely devalorized by its being uh, mechanically reproduced. And so in fact, Montaigne is doing this absolutely the same thing in, uh, in uh, uh, desacralizing the, 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 the signature as a uh, as an as a sort of a uh, authentication of, a, of an identity, if you like. So uh, let's see if we can get. Uh, this is probably toward the end, and just come back to the to the beginning here of the aventure, uh, and uh, and then uh, and then the way that this becomes uh, 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 becomes what it is. Il n'est en l'aventure aucune plus express que dans les and then uh, he uh, goes on and he uh, mentions a, uh, uh, a guy he knew, a gentleman. Si j'ai vu un gentilhomme qui ne communiquait sa vie que par les opérations de son ventre. There's vent, avant, ventre. There's that same signifier. Vous voyez chez lui, on montre un ordre de bassin de sept ou huit jours. C'était son étude, ses discours, tout autre propos lui puait. Ce sont ici un peu plus civilement les excréments d'un vieil esprit, but excréments, here and there are ex, they're mental excretions, excréments. So it's, it's not, uh, it's both physical and in effect it is uh, uh, metaphysical. Uh, d'un vieil esprit, du haut, ton, 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 lâche, et toujours indigeste. And so, uh, and so in effect, this, um, this the, the, co the copographic register also has to do with the, the parole de fragment that we are we are uh, giving. So just to finish up here, uh, this is in 310, uh, where in effect he uh, goes back to éclat. In fact, he says, je suis né uh, d'une famille qui a coulé sans éclat. Uh, and yet, in effect, the essays are just filled with uh, éclat. And then, uh, and then he uh, goes on to speak that he, uh, uh, he, uh, uh, he is in effect, uh, he desires softly what he wants. Uh, uh, je désire mollement ce que je désire. So uh, this this uh, uh, this begins a uh, begins a, a process, if you like, of going back over and seeing seeing effect the, the surface effects and then the, the 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 scintillations of the text as it as it goes. So uh, let's see. That's uh, that's what I have, and then I'm uh, we can uh, maybe uh, go from there or something. So let's see. We want to. So stop share. Okay. Thank you so much, Tom. I, I've missed you. Uh, thank you for uh, uh, making my cheeks ache and bringing a tear to these to these eyes. Oh, yeah. um, thank you. Uh, we've got a, a lot of questions actually in the in the chat. Um, I'm gonna uh, allow myself one to begin, if that's okay, and then we'll sort of just take them in order. But uh, something that that, that I really, um, I mean, one of the many things that that I noticed in in, in your reading. Uh, and uh, it comes out a, a little bit more in, in the written version, but the the uh, the importance of the space between the chapters. Yeah. And I really, really struck, um, you quote, so on the one hand, you, you make it really clear how these, uh, uh, you, you know, chapters are never quite cut off from each other and there's stuff happening between them and in the titles and so forth. Um, and then you also quote Montaigne, uh, uh, page 995, where he talks about, he says, Parce que la coupure si fréquente des chapitres de quoi juser au commencement m'assemble et rompre l'attention avant qu'elle soit née et la dissoudre des dénions si couchés pour si peu, blah, 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 je me suis mise à les faire plus long. So he says, I used to write these short chapters, yeah. cut out too much, now I'm going to do the long ones. And yeah. I was just really struck by this strange anxiety between wanting those blank spaces and then getting rid of those blank spaces. And uh, I don't know, that was just something that really jumped out at me. Isn't that the beauty of parataxis? Uh, uh, where in effect, uh, again, oh, I always think of a, of a, of a, 
of a, a conversation I had with Jean Seyard, uh, and he was uh, we were uh, we were talking about Jean Molinet, uh, and uh, and then somewhere Molinet, uh, uh, I think in the fait he says, "Quand vous arrivez à la lisière du verre, vous ferez ceci ou cela." So that the end of a line is the end of a world. Mm. Then in fact you're in a blank space, and then you have to start over again. So in effect, the the edge, uh, the edge is, and I think the the essays at there are at, are are uh, very uh, crucially uh, uh, articulated at their edges, and uh, 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 and in fact, that you know, that's that that would be uh, that would be my my uh, response uh, to that. And I think the again the the these we know how writers, good writers, always have a uh, they always have a Parthian shot. Uh, remember how a parting shot is also related to a Parthian shot, to an arrow that is uh, uh, shot by a Parthian warrior who retreats, but then fires backwards. Montaigne gets at that in, in fact, the beginning of, uh, of uh, Decoche. Uh, and so, and so that's when I think that's where the the the, the end of the essay, the end of the essays, I think, or the beginning of the essays are, are, are so crucial. And then what is it in effect to, to start an essay? You don't know where you are yet. And in fact, and then you and then you're uh, uh, you want to get settled, but you never quite can get settled. It's sort of like uh, uh, in cinema, you, you you want to get into a narrative, but it's is uh, but no, not so fast, not so fast. Because if you get into the narrative, you don't you stop seeing what uh, is what is happening. Uh, in the articulation, I think it's the same same thing in the in the essays or in in in, uh, in great literature. So I'm going to read some some questions out. So first one from uh, Nadine Cuperti Tur, uh, who's who's done uh, lots of interesting work on Montaigne, including her his uh, you know translations of, of Montaigne and so forth. Um, so so her question uh, in French. Uh, so merci pour cette intervention brillante. Voici ma question. Peut-on lier la thématique de l'éclat avec ce que Montaigne dit de sa marqueterie mal jointe et de ses difficultés d'écriture comparées à la légèreté et à la fécondité de la pensée? Oui, oui, c'est absolument. Uh, oui, je, je, je dirais oui, uh, encore oui, et uh, encore une fois, re oui, if you, uh, mm. si vous voulez. Alors, uh, alors uh, justement, le, le, ce, ce moment de marqueterie, alors c'est vrai que uh, uh, c'est un moment uh, uh, qui est très, très, uh, des essais qui est très commenté, uh, dans le sens où uh, on, on, on se demande s'il s'agit du marché, uh, s'il s'agit de, de l'emblème, justement de voir et de lire et puis le fait de marquer euh, de euh, d'imprimer et puis euh, de, de laisser des euh, euh, des vides ou des, des espaces ouverts justement dans, entre les jointures alors dans ce sens il il va à l'encontre de, euh, de 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 chrétien de Troyes qui justement fait la conjointure euh, justement c'est c'est une jointure mais qui est euh, euh, comme comme je disais euh, 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 qui est pas tactique et c'est là où justement euh, les essais deviennent de plus en plus dialogiques euh, justement le le va et vient du lecteur et de l'essai se trouve justement dans ces interstices de de cette marqueterie alors, euh, euh, alors, formule géniale, absolument géniale euh, 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 dans de la vanité vers la fin de, euh, de l'essai. Absolument. Merci. Alors, comme je dis, Sève, euh, dès les 18, je ne saurais que dire sinon crier merci, merci, merci. Merci. <laughs> uh... So, uh, two, two comments and a question from our uh, friend and colleague, John O'Brien. Uh, oh, my God, John, happy, oh, terrific. He's happy to see you. Uh, oh, what a pleasure. It's been too long. Two, so, two, two comments. First one, yes, indeed, uh, Ville was blind. And mm -hmm. then, uh, second, uh, um, which John um, prefaces by saying it's a, it's a, a, a pedantic, but I think playful point. So, he, he notes Montaigne was often written Montaigne. By early yeah. modern writers, so the "Ma maison est juchée sur un tête" is also uh, ironic in that way. Is, uh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Adds to what you're saying. Absolutely, it. yeah. And he says, does it, I think it's in uh, in vanity. Uh, c'est mon, it's mine. C'est mon. <laughs> 
So John's question, how would you relate your notion of éclat to what Montaigne says in 3.9, j'aime l'allure poétique à Sceaux et à Gambade? Uh, I, I was going to quote that, uh, but that's the, I think the éclat is, takes place in the step, in the, in the, in the, in the jump, and then in the, in the gambling. Uh, that's, that's one, again, John, I think we're all, we're part of these, uh, of a group that in fact, we think it's one of these formulas that, that we live with uh, and, uh, uh, and, it, and, it, and we go back to it to assure ourselves that in effect, uh, it's not that bad to be unreasonable or to follow a reason, a, a, uh, a reason that goes a uh, baton rompu, as it were. Yeah, so absolutely. Thank you, John. <laughs> Uh, a question from Tom, Tom Murphy, who is um, uh, who is writing an absolutely fabulous dissertation at the moment about um, uh, nature and uh, medical discourses and uh, oh. many things that I won't try and summarize here. But he says, thank you for this splendid and fascinating talk. I want to return to something you said briefly in passing. Could you say a little more about reading Montaigne superficially versus reading him, quote, in depth? Very often we're inclined, if not encouraged, to look for depth everywhere. Could you tell us a bit more about the dangers of depth? I think you fall into thematism. You, you fall into ideas that, um, uh, that tend to be, uh, uh, that become predetermined and then you're working with, uh, you're working with concepts that aren't, uh, that aren't material and because, uh, I mean, again, I'll just quote Derrida again. I'm not, again, I, I'm, I'm not a you know a, uh, I'm not an acolyte uh, at all, but uh, 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 Derrida says, "Dès qu'un concept est écrit, il écrit." <laughs> uh, 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 and and so and so when you read in depth, you have to do. Of course, you have to do this again. Just some of the some of the the philosophical reflections are 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 uh, so, so extraordinary in the essays and. And uh, yet, in effect, they come to the surface at the same time. Again, <clears throat> I think again, they always come back to the to the this uh, uh, the first sentences of the Lutile et de Lonette, where uh, uh, it says there's, there's, there's always something that's, that tends to be vicious in us, uh, and 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 then uh, and, and it's something that we have to try and regulate. In effect, that uh, and this is where, in effect, that. The the, 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 the the psychic depth uh, is there, but it's, it's it's seen. We see it on the surface at the same time. Few authors, I think, are are at that. Uh, um, as Montaigne says in one twenty, says, uh, "Qui sont à ce, à ce palo at this level." Hmm. The question from uh, Vittoria Falanca. Uh, oh who, wow! <laughs> no introduction. Uh, but I, I will do some unpaid publicity as well to say her, her book. book is forthcoming and it's truly really fabulous about Le Dessin uh, dans les Essais de Montaigne. So check it out when it comes out. Wonderful. Uh, but her, her question, so um, it's fascinating, fascinating to think of the essay as the creation of writing persona, of a writing persona that is constantly a stranger to themselves. And the essay are, is asking us not to feel at home, to recognize and practice unhomeliness. Might we triangulate these two poles, the essay and psychoanalysis and humor, centering the role of the joke? I'm thinking of the expression éclat de rire, éclaté de rire. I'm thinking, yeah, laughter as a disruptive gesture, the body overcomes. So much of Tom's fantastic readings depend on elucidating Montaigne's puns, his linguistic sleights of hand. How much humor, like the éclat, uh, be as much a movement or gesture a bodily one as a linguistic device. Might we build out from this to a humorous plus disrupted reading of the essay? What might this look or feel like? I would say, Victoria, wonderful. Thank you so much. Just turn, just take the question marks off. <laughs> and I think I think you've got it. Just remove the question marks and you have it all there. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's it, you're brilliant. It's brilliant. Just. Uh, uh, um, uh, and it's, uh, well, uh, you know, Victoria was in uh, French 70A uh, years, years ago, and I think, uh, anyway, it was, yeah, so we've, yeah, we've been, uh, uh, been riding in the same coach for some <laughs> years.
Wonderful. Thank you. Again, that's that's the way I would put it. I think if you just the, what you were saying, I think in effect those were those were <coughs> assertions that uh, were right on the mark that in effect uh, uh, were were um, uh, were cast in such a way that they, they that they uh, spoke uh, speak for themselves. Um, another question, uh, this time from Keith uh, uh, Knighton-Halser, uh, who uh, is uh, also asking a question related to, to the humor uh, that's come out. Uh, and he says, uh, how far back in time and among scholars does awareness of puns and anagrams in Montaigne go? Is there any possibility that Saussure might have been aware of this when he embarked on his readings of Lucretius? Um. Uh, gee, this is a this is very provocative. Again, I think of uh, I think of uh, Stalovinsky's essay "Les mots sous les mots" uh, mm -hmm. the, uh, about 1978. Uh, uh, that uh, that I think um, uh, that takes uh, a different uh, tack on Saussure. I know that that uh, Saussure is uh, uh, is um, Almost bipolar, if you like, because he he's again his he, he never wrote anything, but I think his his students put the put his, the uh, uh, the linguistics together. But then when he uh, uh, when he when he sets up the the uh, uh, diagram of the relation of the that that proves the uh, the arbitrary nature of the sign, uh, he has uh, he has next to the term. Um, uh, again, a tree as a tree, uh, and uh, to develop to that point. But what could be more arbitrary than that? Uh, and then, uh, and then he has the horse uh, just below uh, that is looking at the word uh, ecus, uh, and so uh, one is equal to the at. And so, in fact, the 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 law the let's say the the arbit the, the convention the arbitrary the uh, the uh, uh, the uh, not the again I was thinking of the um, of the uh, the Socratic dialogue the Platonic dialogue of uh, um, the arbitrary that was is it Hermogenes Hermogenes in effect is for the the uh, the arbitrary nature of the sign and then uh, uh, and that and then the versus the motivated but in effect. The, the diagram in there is motivating the arbitrary. And so, uh, 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 and so that the one is almost uh, in, in play uh, with, uh, with the other. I think Lacan reads this uh, somewhere in Les, in Les Écrits, in which uh, he wants to see, uh, in, he, again, he wants to have castration in the, in the, in the mix. So, so he has to have the anagram of Baal, uh, in Ahalba. so so uh, so he's motivating the arbitrary same way. Uh, and so so uh, I think you the, the one plays uh, plays with the other, and this is where again this is where uh, uh, poetry and discourse in effect are are are, are in, in in close uh, in close tension again in in, in writings that are uh, of let's say of, of that of that quality. Yeah. I think we'll um, we'll take a final question. Uh, we we we'll try and keep this to um, an hour and a half ish. Uh, but a question from Jeff Purcells. Uh, oh, great! Thanks. Very happy to see you. Yeah. Uh, he's so riffing uh, off of Ville, uh, for whom uh, the essay were primarily an oral uh, text. He had them read to him. Uh, is that oh, not so? And then he says, and a Montaigne, of course, dictated. So yeah. this question, uh, you've uh, you've ever been finely tuned to the playful nature of the wordplay of the essay as much for the ear as for the eye. Would you consider doing an audio version of Montaigne in French or in Frame's incomparable translation? It blows up the work in such usefully provocative ways. That sounds like a good project, Tom. I think so, too. We've got to do it. Maybe we can do it together. We've got to collaborate. <laughs> And Let's do it, Jeff. And then Jeff, uh, Jeff, in effect, anything I did on 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 three nine owes to uh, to your work, Jeff, uh, uh, as you know. I'm I'm going to ask one final question, which kind of builds off or is related to Jeff's question. It's it's more of a playful one. 
um, uh, but the you know given the cinematic vo vocabulary in your uh, presentation and in the piece uh, which uh, is forthcoming uh, and your your passion for cinema. Uh, I guess a double question, which is a little cheeky, but we'll end on it. Uh, uh, if Montaigne were a filmmaker, what kind of films would he make? And could we make a film of the essay? I've thought about that. Um, uh, I think it would be, I, uh, and I think you one, I'm thinking of something of landscapes, but a lot, I think there'd be a lot of jump cuts. Uh, and then there would be uh, incrustations of language in the image. It would be a what uh, Varda has called a cine écriture. Uh, 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 in fact, I think we could almost meld. I'm thinking of going back to an old to what, what is not practiced anymore because of the economy of the cinema. Is uh, now you have just straight cuts and you have. Uh, uh, very diegetic shots, and then it's very rare that you have a non-diegetic uh, 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 sequence. In fact, it's where the sequence is just a sequence and just to see something. But we would try to do do takes uh, 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 of uh, 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 from the essays. Can it, maybe one one place to begin would be in uh, uh, the La Physionomie, where he. Uh, uh, is uh, you know he leaves the, uh, the position of being the mayor of Bordeaux, and then he takes to the countryside. In fact, he becomes nomadic, uh, and that could be a certainly you could try to uh, uh, do uh, do some screenwriting that would uh, uh, that would work with this. And then, of course, he's he's uh, devalisé. He's uh, uh, he's attacked by brigands. Uh, you have you have all kinds of dramatic uh, moments uh, that are uh, in there. Again, I would just footnote that further by saying in a in a, a wonderful uh, interview, I think was it even it was even with Lestrangon that uh, uh, Levi Strauss uh, uh, said that you've got to you have to make a movie of uh, of the histoire d'un voyage en terre du Brésil, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, that again it's. Uh, uh, the other than the Aguerre of Herzog, but uh, uh, um, uh, we could think, we could really think about a, uh, a, a text. Again, you'd have a lots of, you would have some coming and going because he, he had a, I think he had an apartment in uh, Bordeaux when he was uh, uh, at, the, at the Court of Appeals and he was going to and from. So you have that, you have, you're going to have a, a have a uh, displacement uh, taking this is sort of this is sort of, I'm starting thinking out loud again. So. <laughs> so, thank yeah. you so much, Tom. Uh, thank you so much for being with us. Um, thank you. Thank you uh, when when is the uh, the chapter on Eclat coming up? Uh, I think it just in a few weeks. It should be a few weeks. I think. Uh, uh, yeah, and uh, uh, and then I'm working on this uh, 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 another. Uh, another book for uh, our yellow covered friends for Gagne, <laughs> and it's uh, the title is Des mots à la carte uh, mm -hmm. and uh, and I'm going to be having a, a substantial chapter on uh, uh, on uh, on a signifying process of the map like sense of uh, of the essays uh, and the way that they are they are uh, the way that in fact they 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 uh, they produce a space. They become a spatial, spatial stories, as it were. Yeah, we look. We look forward to it, Tom. Uh, okay. I'm afraid time is yep. is getting the better of us. Um, okay. It's been so a great joy. Uh, thank you for your uh, being so patient and uh, and indulgent, uh, generous uh, with uh, uh, with me. So, oh please. Uh, okay. So the, the, the previous episodes um, of this series uh, with Valérie Dion and uh, Ali Ben Maklouf are now available on the Maison Française's YouTube channel. Today's uh, conversation will be joining them shortly. Okay. Uh, this is the final episode uh, of our series for the spring, but we'll be back after the summer break on September 25th. For more information, please sign up Wonderful. Uh, for the newsletter on the Maison's website. Yeah. I would just like to thank, in addition to Tom and to everybody who uh, joined us today, you were numerous. 
Uh, I would like to thank uh, the Maison Française and especially uh, François Nudelman and Courtney Rutherford, uh, the Department of French Literature, Thought and Culture, and its chair, Emily Apter, uh, and NYU's Medieval and Renaissance Center, Mark, and its director, Martha Rust. And especially, again, thank you, Tom. Thank, thank you, everyone, you. for joining us, and a happy summer to all. To all. Likewise. Thank you.